Good morning. It's 6.57 and I'm sitting at my desk as I do every day. And um, someone had asked me this week, which I really loved. I love that they asked me this. Um, what are you saying to me, computer? Um, somebody asked me this week what, well, let me start over. I'm not sure I was recording it. Guys, technology, I can't. I just can't. I can't. It's like almost 7 in the morning. I actually slept in a little today. Yay, President's Day. Um, but somebody asked me this week uh, how I do my quiet time. And it actually made me think of a lot of different things because I have always been really bothered by that phrase, by quiet time. Um, it's not it's not in the Bible like a command of you must have quiet time. Um, you must read a devotional every day. Um, you must do all of these things. And I think that sometimes we get caught up in um, if we're doing it right. Like, God, am I spending time with you correctly? Um, am I reading what I'm supposed to read? Am I praying the right way? Um, so I just wanted to give you some encouragement that I really don't believe there is a right way. Um, I think that there is absolutely a, um, a biblical command that we see in Jesus, like an imitation of who Jesus is, um, imitating him, that says, you should get away. You should get away to a quiet place and you should focus your mind on the bigger, on who the Lord is. You should focus your mind on being grateful and spending time um, placing your mind on things that are not worldly, but they're bigger. They're bigger than that. Um, but I want to encourage you that if you do that, there's not a right way to do it. Um, I mean, there's probably some wrong ways, depending on what you're thinking about. Um, <laughs> um, but I sit at my desk every morning, and I have such a wide array of things. I have um, like I have note cards here, and I have post-it notes, and I have all kinds of little devotionals, and I have my Bible, and I have pens, and I have journals, and I have um, I have a prayer for my kids, like posted right in front of my face. Um, sometimes I read it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I write a note, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I, I almost every day I read a little scripture. Maybe it's a verse, maybe it's two verses, maybe it's a chunk, maybe it's a lot. Um, but I started this two years ago. I, I mean, I've, I've been a pastor for uh, 15 years in some way. Honesty moment, two years ago, right before COVID hit, I felt very convicted that I needed to get up before my family and I needed to sit and find a place. I needed a place where I would sit and I would focus and I would pray. And guys, nothing has transformed my life like this two years. Nothing. If you looked at every morning, you'd be like, what does she do? She just goes and sits in her chair. Maybe she prays. Maybe she holds this cross. Maybe she writes a note to somebody. Maybe she Facebooks someone and says, I love you. Like, like what does she really do? Like, is that worth getting up for? But I'm telling you, the... Um, the addition of all of those days, <laughs> now that I'm two years into it, um, I can look back and I can see that I'm a different person. I'm a, I'm a more grateful person. I'm a more um, joyful person. I'm a more patient with my children person. Not all, not all the time, not every day. <laughs> I'm still very fallible here. I'm like still very broken over here. But, but, and I can't really describe it to you. All I can say is that two years ago, 
when I said, Lord God, I'm going to have a place to sit and be with you every morning. That has transformed who I am. Now, I don't know who I would be on this day if I'd never done that. You may look at me and go, eh, I think she's the same person that she was, even if she didn't do quiet time. But I don't feel like that. I feel like the Lord God and I, I have a, I have a communion with him. I have a relationship with him. I have, uh, I have um, an intimacy with him um, that I can't really describe to you, but it has, it carries over from the morning into every, every part of my day. It's changed who I am. Um, so I encourage you this morning to, uh, it, it's a sacrifice. I love to sleep. Okay. It's a sacrifice. Um, and I try to be very disciplined because if I'm not very disciplined, I'll skip it. So you got to have discipline in there and say, this is what I'm doing period. This is what I'm doing. Um, but I encourage you, um, to find the time. Sometimes mine is 15 minutes. I try to get with 30. I try to stick with 25 to 30 minutes if I can do it. That's usually my goal. Uh, but I would encourage you to find that time and that place in your day, that physical place where you can sit and you can say, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait for you, God. I'm going to wait to see what you do. Maybe you're not going to say anything today. Maybe I'm going to feel nothing. Um, I have mornings like that. I have mornings where I sit here and I'm like, I am thinking about my grocery list. Lord God, sorry. Get me focused. I have lots of mornings like that. And then I have mornings where I sit here and it feels like the Lord God is oppressing, impressing upon me something that I really needed or will need for the day. Um, so I encourage you to do that. There's no right way to do it. There's, you know, you, you just do it. You spend the time with just you and calling out to the Lord and I, I, he will show up. It may take you some time to figure out how he how he's showing up, but he will show up. And um, don't limit yourself to to one devotional or to one way to do it. Just find the time and sit, and all of that will come. All of that will happen. There's a psalm in Psalm five. There's a verse that says it's David writing it, and he says, "In the morning." Lord God, I lay my request before you, and then I wait expectedly, expectantly throughout the day to see what you're going to do. If we start our day just by saying, Lord God, I don't, I don't even know what this day is going to bring. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm here. I'm, I'm here to listen to you, to see you. Um, what are you going to do today? What's today going to be? then I think by the end of the day, when we lay our heads on our pillows, um, we can think back and go, Lord God, I thank you. Thank you for today. Whatever mess it was, thank you for what you, what you did. I can see it. I can see a bit of it. All right. I love you, friends. I hope you're having a great day. And um, run the race. Run the race. May you not just think about the temporal things today. May we think about the big things. May we think about him today.